Uh, it sounds as if there was the germ of the culture there, but it was a matter of cultivating it or, or seizing that opportunity. I would imagine that along the way, not everyone bought into that philosophy. Along the, in the early days, it, was, you know, it really wasn't there. It's like all typical entrepreneurial organizations. The entrepreneur thinks their business is about the product or the service that they're selling. And as soon as they hire one person, then it becomes about people and about serving people. And Starbucks was the perfect, you know, I have to admit, it was the perfect venue for doing what I believe we should do, which was, you know, uh, uh, make it about the people because we're, it's a social product. Right? We drink a cup of coffee with other people, having a conversation, reading a newspaper. Sometimes it's just having a conversation with ourselves. But it's with that cup of coffee, so it kind of fit it. Um, but it, in the early days, we, our customers used to accuse us of being arrogant. I remember when I first got there, I was there about maybe three months, and I, it was amazing. Three letters came in on the same day that where customers had written us and said, you know, I don't need to come in and hear your garbage about how great your coffee is. I just want a, cup, a hot cup of coffee, and I want it with a smile on the face, on your face. And I read all three of these letters, and I invited the three customers into the office to meet with our leadership team. And I had, at that time, you know, we didn't have very many people, maybe 100 in the leadership team. And we just had an exchange about what the issues were, and it became a, one human being to another human being. It wasn't customer to employee, it wasn't Starbucks to customer, it was people to people. And that began this process of beginning to understand what this place was all about, and how we needed to not only take care of the people we're serving, but how we needed to take care of the people inside of Starbucks. And I have this saying that, that Starbucks isn't in, in the people business, isn't in the coffee business serving people, but we're in the people business serving coffee. Mm -hmm. And it's a little play on words, but it became a driver in the organization. Mm -hmm. And I think we stayed true to that. Uh, how critical was it to the success? And were you able to quantify that? What metrics, what guides did you use to verify that this was the way to go rather than taking a less costly approach? Well, you know, we didn't use metrics for that. Okay, we were doing what we thought was right. We were, we were trying to figure out what human beings wanted and what they needed. In, in a sense, in what we wanted. And so we just lived who we were. Uh, but it was everything. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's everything. This is not, it was, Starbucks was not my first dance. And I saw it work in other places too. That when you put people here at the top of this pyramid, right, the ones that, that matter, then everything has to flow from that. Every decision you make should flow from that idea. And so it, it, you know, that idea just, it drove the business. And it, it's what drives the business today. I, one question I always get asked is, well, what kind of training programs do you have? We had lousy training programs. Yeah, we teach people how to make a cup of coffee and do all those things, but we didn't have any smile training programs. We did have one program that was really good, and I th think they still use it today. It was called Star Skills. Star Skills was not about business. Star Skills was 100% about teaching people how to interact with other human beings in a productive way. You could take that knowledge and take it home and use it with your families or with your kids as equally as use it in our stores. And that was the one thing that we did have. We were try trying to teach people to be better human beings. It sounds as if uh, there was a lot of management by gut in some degree. Sure. Do you envy the restaurateurs of today with the amount of knowledge that they have, the amount of data that they have uh, through technology and the, having that resource to help them make decisions and to cultivate their culture and their business? I don't envy, I don't envy, I don't envy everybody because there is such a danger to, to think that data is what it's all about. Right? I always I like to tell this joke, if your wife or her husband comes home tonight and, and says, you know, honey, I'm not happy in this marriage, do you really need to have data, more data than that? But the problem is, is that right, we think we have to have data to make a decision, and we don't. We have to have information to make a decision, but the best information still comes from one-on-one -on -one conversations. You know, when you go get all this information, it all comes and comes in spreadsheets and it, all these questions you ask and what the customer is saying and which ones from this neighborhood are saying this one, this, and all of a sudden it becomes not real. Mm -hmm. It becomes a giant attempt at manipulation to get what you want. 
right? Because you have all this information. And I'm afraid that unless we're careful, we're going to lose the human touch in our businesses. And yeah, I mean, are there businesses that don't need a human touch? Certainly, I live in the city of no human touch, you know, with Amazon and Microsoft. You know, Amazon is 100% about transactions. Their customer service is about transactions, their sales are about transactions. They're, th that's what they're about. Now, they do a good job at that. But in our business, where we have to come face to face with the people that we're serving and face to face with the people that are serving, it's about human relationships, real human relationships. It's not about transactions. It's about caring about one another, about trying to serve one another in a way that helps people have a better life. So, you know, I, I'm actually glad I don't have to deal with all that because I'd come in, I don't want to have to come in the morning and only look at data. I want to come in the morning and ask Sally or Jim next to me, how, what did they do last night? How are they doing? What are they planning on doing today? 